So in this video, I'm gonna show Rachel how to brew her first beer, and no better place to start than the homebrew shop. We're here at Asheville Brewer Supply, and we're gonna go inside, and Rachel's gonna grab the ingredients. Yeah, so what we're brewing today is called a smash beer. Kind of makes me think of smash mouth. You know, I think it's just gonna be like a smash hit, though, so. Oh, hey, how's it going? Good, thanks. How are you? Good. This is a beginner beer. So Rachel's never brewed beer before. She's only drank beer. Do you know exactly what malt you need? Yeah, I have the ingredient list here on my phone. Here you go. And I got the recipe from Kyle's website, so clawhammersupply.com. It was super helpful. It did the calculations for me so that I came all prepared with my ingredient list and Ted took it from there. Smash beer is about as easy as it gets. There's only one grain, so you don't have to worry about sourcing multiple ingredients. There's only one hop, so you don't have to keep track of that stuff. I mean, here, you want Oh, that smells good. Yeah, it's, it's oh amazing. Gosh. So if, if like you're down at the homebrew shop and like some big bearded dude comes up to you and he's like, you want smash, bro? <laughs> That's all good. He just means he wants to make a single hop, single malt and single hop beer. And what kind of yeast were you needing? American ale. The White Labs American ale? Yes, perfect. Okay, perfect. So we got all our ingredients, and now we get to go back to the office to brew my very first beer. Ready? Yep. All right. Let's brew some beer. Let's do this. Let's get some water in our kettle. That part I'm used to. I have, that's about the only part of this operation that I think I've done before, is fill a kettle with water. So Rachel, we're looking for 7.2 gallons in the kettle there. There are gallon markers on the side of the kettle. Seems like a lot of responsibility. <laughs> I have faith in you. Okay, so here's what we have. This is a printout from this um, software called Beersmith. To brew beer, you actually don't need to use any software. You could just find the recipes on the internet. For example, we have tons of recipes on our website that you could just pull off and you know you could use it in our system, but you don't have to use it our system, you could use really any system. The next thing we could do, but this is totally optional, and I think we will do it since we can, mm -hmm. is adjust water chemistry. Yeah, I mean the important thing to know about water chemistry is that it's not critical to make good beer. My printout sheet is telling me that we need three grams of calcium chloride, two-ish grams of Epsom salt, and two grams of gypsum. Do you wanna measure those out or weigh those out? I think one thing I would definitely do, no matter what stage of, brew of brewing I'm at, would be to either pour your water the day, the day before and let it sit, which will allow the chlorine to evaporate out, or add half a Campton tablet before you start brewing to get rid of any chlorine that might lend some bad flavors to your beer. I would definitely recommend everybody do that. Does this process make it more like a clean slate of purified water versus North Carolina tap water? What we've done is, I've, this is Asheville tap water. Mm -hmm. We've taken- Good local um, flavor. Great local flavor. Best, some of the best water around. <laughs> they dream about this in Florida. We have imported the water profile, like Asheville City water profile into Beersmith. If you use a program like Beersmith, you plug in all of your ingredients, you tell it what kind of equipment you're using, it will tell you what kind of brewing salts to add to adjust the water chemistry, etc. So this right here, is the complete joy of homebrewing. This is like the OG how to brew beer book, right? This one I've had since, <laughs> it's funny, my, my, like one of my college girlfriends put the, a note in here for me, I'm just seeing this. <laughs> <laughs> I've had this book since That's I was That's amazing. In... What did that note in that book say? <laughs> um, I think it's a secret. Dear Kyle, your dirty dishes have been in the sink for over a week. Could you clean them? Love, Samantha. Um, this is like the OG, you know, how to brew mm -hmm. beer book. And what they say in here over and over is, um, relax, have a homebrew. That means like, if you mess something up or something's not working out or, you know, you missed a target or something, you know, just chill out and drink a beer at school. It doesn't matter. <laughs> 
So that's kind of like how we do things, I guess. So next step, we have this grain that we got from the homebrew shop. Here's the beginner option. You can just have the homebrew shop grind the grain for you. Okay. You can say, hey, I want 10 and a half pounds of two row, which is what we have here. Please grind it for me and they'll grind it for you. So we got the grain from the homebrew shop uncrushed because we have a grain mill here in the office. And I did that because I just wanted to show Rachel the process of crushing the grains. Do I go? Yeah, go for it. So we sent it through the first time and it was definitely um, ground, but it wasn't super fine. And so we decided to send it through a second time. Double crushing the grain will improve your the efficiency of your mash. So you're going to turn more of the starch in the grain into sugar. It sort of looked like grinding coffee to me, which is something that I'm used to and I'm going to keep going back to that because like similarly at the homebrew store when they ask if we need it ground, like that's what customers will do with me at the coffee shop when they're buying bags of beans and we get to ask what they're brewing and what machine they use and um, that will determine how fine we grind it. But yeah, this can be a good place good. to stop. Mm -hmm. This would be a good place to stop. Mm -hmm. So before we get too far into this process, I'm going to take the yeast out of the refrigerator. Uh, it's a good idea to let your yeast warm up to room temp. Probably take it out an hour or two before you're ready to pitch it. So it kind of slowly warms back up when it's not shocked by the wort when you pitch it. So we're gonna add our grain basket. So now that we've crushed the grains, we are going to get ready to mash in. So I like to hook the hoses up before we mash in so we can get things circulating as soon as we get the grain in. So I think we have the water to temperature now. Um, I think we're in the mid 150s and we're ready to pour the ground grain into it so to start the mashing process. And we're adding the grains and we're just stirring them in as we're adding them to make sure we're breaking up any like dough balls that might form. We have our grains in. I'm gonna open this ball valve. And if you want, hit the pump button there on the controller. There we go. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So during the mash here, we are recirculating the wort. We're pulling it off of the bottom of the kettle and then pumping it back into the top of the kettle. So what we need to do now is set a timer. So we're like 10 minutes in here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get a little sample of this wort. This is another water chemistry thing, which is pH. Mm -hmm. You're typically shooting for a pH. Uh, if you really wanna dial it in precisely, like 5.2 to 5.4. Okay, what's so special about pH anyway? This is totally optional. Okay. Again, like the other water chemistry stuff, I, we've brewed plenty of batches and not adjusted pH. I was told upon coming here that it was gonna be very fun and now we're just measuring pH and doing science, but hoping we get to the beer drinking soon. I'm literally just gonna make a guess. <laughs> so, Rachel's an easy sell. I think I, <laughs> I don't even know if I told her anything to begin with. I just said, would you wanna brew beer with us? And she said, yeah, absolutely. Okay, ready? I'll pop this in here. Let's run all this work through here and then we'll get a fresh sample. Uh, yeah, what did, what did Kyle promise when you came here? That's a great question. What did Kyle, how did Kyle convince me to come here? Actually, full disclosure, um, this is gonna be a little awkward with Rachel sitting here, but so let's do this. We kind of let this mix and cycle through. We'll get another sample. Oh, I think the quote is that he would make it worth my while. Nailed it. See, we're good. 5.39 actually, it's still dropping, so perfect. Maybe after, we're, after the fact, I said, yeah, I'll like pay you maybe. If you've reached the point in your, prog your brewing progression where mm -hmm. you're, you've decided you're gonna check and measure, you're gonna measure and you're gonna adjust the edge. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. Google Chrome. If you're gonna do it, just go ahead and get one of these, I would say. Don't buy the strips and don't buy the $15 pH meter. 
on Amazon. I didn't tell her that I was pregnant pairing gift cards to uh, Bojangles Chicken. <laughs> but again, she didn't ask, so. 60 minute mash is done. And we can pull the grains out now. Yep. Perfect. For information on the brewing system we're using and for even more information on how to brew beer, check out our website, clawhammersupply.com. So what we'll do while this is kind of draining out is we're gonna, we're gonna get this um, heated up to a boil. So the next okay. step in the process So we have reached a boil. While we were all taking a break, um, I pulled the grains out and then just dumped them, put the lid back on. The earlier you add hops, the more bitter your beer is gonna be. The later you add hops in the process, the, the more hop aroma and hop flavor you're going to get and the less bitter, right? Okay. So, Beer recipes are written kind of in a, like a backwards. Ah, They're kind of written backwards. I see, we're 60 minutes out. Yeah, so we're gonna boil for 60 minutes. So if you ever see a, something that says a 60 minute edition, that's, that's the, the countdown one. clock. So you're counting. Got it. So we should actually be starting a timer right now. Right. Um, this is gonna be our 60 minute edition. So these are Zappa hops. I think they're like indigenous to um, Mexico. That came from the mountains of New Mexico. Mm, not Mexico, Neo Mexico. They have a kind of like a spicy, earthy vibe. Mm. Oh wow, that smells like beer. Yeah, that smells great. <laughs> as soon as I opened the bag, I was like, oh, this smells like an IPA. <laughs> I do like hop. I do like hoppy um, and like like hop forward beers. All right. Should we drink a beer? I mean, it's sort of like 130, 145. Are you really? into that? Are you into that idea? Oh wow! I liked the bitter that I tried earlier. <laughs> the English bitter that we were drinking. So we did a 60 minute edition of two ounces, and here we're, we've done a five minute edition of two ounces. What I like to do is circulate the boiling wort through all of the stuff I'm gonna be chilling with, just to make sure there's nothing in there that's living. So we're, we've reached the end of our 60 minutes. Okay. So what we'll do now is we'll cut the heat. You can even hit the pump button and turn that off. Because we have a fair amount of hops here, let's add another hop silo. Um, yeah, go ahead and put the, the rest of the hops in there. That should be like four ounces. We did 60 minute, we did a five minute, and then we did a flame out and we let the hops sit at flame out for 20 minutes before we moved on. Flame out is where you add hops as you cut the heat. As you turn, if you're brewing over gas, you turn the flame off, you know, flame out, put the hops in. Now let's eat some food. Let's, we'll leave this chill for like 20 minutes. We'll eat some food, we'll come back and we'll finish it. This is one of the most important elements of brewing, tacos. So the temp has dropped some. It still needs to drop more in order for us to pitch the yeast. So you have this plate chiller, which essentially has two chambers. So you have cold water, ground tap water that's running through one side of the chiller. On the other side, in a different chamber that does not mix with that cold water, you have the hot work. And so if you want to hit the pump button. There's like a metal piece in between the temperatures and then it's gonna cool everything down so that I think we're gonna try to get down to like 70 degrees. But if we chill it down to about 70, um, that'd be a great place to pitch the yeast. Okay. Sanitation is the most important thing because you go through this big process where you know, you're know you milling the grains and you're mashing and you're boiling and you're adding hops and all this other stuff. So we're gonna add one ounce of this per five gallons of water. It's a lot of work for you to screw up by not being careful with your sanitation. You don't want to do all that and then put your wort in a dirty bucket. And we'll fill this with water. This will be our sanitizer solution. Do you know about any of the flavors that like are produced when craft gets in the fermenter? No, and I feel like I probably don't want to. <laughs> like dirty socks, hot dumpster to baby puke. 
No oh. joke. Look it up. It's gross. All right, so now we're ready to transfer this wort into the fermenter. So like, I'm just like all very, very mindful of like what I'm touching and you know, has have my hands been sanitized just like as my as I'm touching my mask. We're being super careful about not just sanitizing the bucket, but making sure as we move the wart into the bucket that the hose is sanitized, that our hands are sanitized with the gloves and nothing is touching any surfaces that haven't been sanitized. So now we're ready to add the yeast. We're ready to pitch the yeast, if I'm being technical about it, I think. We are sanitizing the outside package of the yeast and the scissors, cut that open. They actually produce the yeast inside of this package. So it's never been opened? Never that, been opened, uh, wow. yeah. So I have to use the scissors to open it really carefully and that's, it's like literal first birth into the world. If you were uh, a yeast cell, you know, going to, to your destiny. What kind of noise did you make? What's, you know, what would you yeah. have to say? You know, they're coming out of the package and they're like, wee, 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 yay. I feel so good right now. It finally gets to have a good time and be in some good company. Oh my God, I just, I love you guys. I love all you guys. This has been so much fun. So, the other thing I would never, that I would not skip is aeration. Yeast, um, it needs some oxygen to kind of get, get moving along the way. Oxygen is good at the very beginning of the process. It's actually bad later. Uh -huh. We can get all the oxygen we need in this beer by just like plugging up the hole that's in the top here and shaking it. <laughs> so you want to shake it for like a minute. Very technical. Super technical. Yeah, this is very high tech. This is insider info. That's that, we made some beer. Wow. So we'll it's, leave this hang out for- It's really in there. We'll leave this hang out for at least a week, maybe more like 10 days. I think this one will just leave it sit at room temp since this is just a beginner beer. So let's take the gravity ring and we'll be done. So what this is, is this is just gonna tell us how dense this liquid is, how much sugar is in there. So we're at, I'm gonna say, 1053 probably. Yeah. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna bottle some beer. We've we've reached this point in our journey. We have arrived. Yeah, we've arrived. Oh my gosh. The cold crashing allows the um, Dude, that's so loud. <laughs> yeah, sorry, there's a bunch of construction noise right now. I'm having a sauna installed in my survivor, my survival bunker. Cold crashing will, will like sort of force the particulates that are floating around like the yeast and any kind of hop debris to settle out. So before we um, actually start with the bottling process, what we want to do is add this priming sugar to a pot and heat it up. Ideally, you want to actually boil it to make sure your water is like sanitary. We, we need to get the sugar to dissolve. Mm -hmm. We'll just kind of let this chill. We don't want it to boil it over or anything. We want to keep an eye on it. So we'll kind of get some more stuff done. And then once this is done, we'll, we'll let it chill a little bit and then we'll put it in the bucket. Perfect. Cool. Okay, so the next thing we have to do so we need to transfer this beer into our bottling bucket. We're gonna, we want it to be in this bucket because of the nozzle. So we're gonna have to siphon it into there. Okay, now push it all the way down to the bottom. And just let it lay, sit down, lay down there. So the other important thing here is that we, you don't wanna aerate the beer at this point. We wanna avoid splashing it, you know? We don't want it to just like, we don't wanna just dump it in there. If you end up aerating it at this point, it will oxygenate and basically that will spoil it. It will go bad. It will taste like cardboard or paper. So the temptation here is to get greedy and just kind of get every last bit of liquid out of here. Um, but you start to pull yeast when you do that. So you end up leaving a little bit of liquid behind. Wow, so, the yeast. Yeah, so this is like the crazy part. So check out how much yeast is in here. It looks like tahini. Yeah, right. 
We took a little sample of the wort, and before we get too far along with anything, we want to just measure the specific gravity. So it's looking like we ended right around 1010, and I believe we started right around 1050-ish, mm -hmm. something like that. So our beer is five and a quarter percent ABV. Ooh, that sounds good. Here's how you do this, okay? It's easy, you use the internet. <laughs> Okay, so we're ready for our priming sugar now. This got up to a boil, it's cooled down, and we're gonna go ahead and dump this into the awesome. bucket. You wanna be careful with your priming sugar. You don't wanna add too much, because your bottles could literally blow up because of the pressure. <gasps> oh you know my mean? gosh! Yeah, so. The wife is not gonna be happy about that. Like I said, you don't wanna get like crazy with it and introduce oxygen, but just kinda give it a light stir, just to make sure the priming sugar gets mixed through everything. First of all, you clean the bottle. I, I ran these through like the sanitize um, setting on our dishwasher with PBW, like OxyClean, as the detergent, not regular. Don't, don't use like scented detergent or anything like that. And then of course, like I just dunked it in sanitizer. It has some bubbles in it, but that's fine. Okay, so here's how this works. So the cool thing about the bottling wand is that it doesn't let liquid come through until you push on this little thing on the end here. So like, oh, as so you can see, like, the bottom? yeah. So once it hits the bottom, you push it, then the liquid will be actually be oh. able to flow through. So you have a couple options here. We're not gonna do this, but I'm gonna show you how to do it because, you know, maybe if we were using smaller bottles, this is what I would do. Um, these are um, conditioning tablets. So it's just basically sugar tablets. So this is, this, will be, this is just a little bit more sugar for the yeast to eat. Once we cap this, we put the sugar in there the fermentation will actually kick off again. And then that's actually what's gonna carbonate the beer because the yeast is going to release carbon dioxide as it cool. chews through the last little bit of the sugar. How long does the carbonation take? You know, I would leave them sit at least a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. One of those things where you can just pop a bottle up and then you know, figure out if it's ready or not. If you put them in the fridge, nothing will happen because the yeast is only active at you know, roughly room temp. So you wanna keep them at room temp. Okay, so I think maybe we'll do these last two and then, then um, yeah, we'll put some in that little mini keg and, and drink it. The real reason I'm here. <laughs> All right, so this is like literally just for, you know, us to be able to taste beer today. Um, and you know what we should have done is not, we should have filled this up somewhat before we added the priming sugar. It's gonna make it a little sweet. There we go. Cool. So let's get set up for a little tasting, I guess. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna quick carb this. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This is looking pretty good. That's a beautiful looking beer there. It's pretty. I'm so proud of it. Cheers. So this is what I like about kegging. Okay. You know, like you get to drink. Having it right away. Immediately, yeah. It has a really nice aroma to it. Like it smells great. Yeah, I really like the smell. I might just sit here smelling it forever. Smell, yeah, it smells really happy. Oh yeah, that's great. Oh, it's good. That's really good. Oh my gosh, thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Um, a little citrusy, right? I like that. It has a lot of like spiciness to it to mm. me. And kind of an earthy as well. The hops were really earthy, yeah. Yeah, and then it has a hint of like a floral taste as well. For being single hop, it's got a lot going on, right? I would describe it as complex. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's literally the simplest beer you could ever make. It's a yeah. single malt and yeah. single hop beer. It, it does not taste like a single hop um, beer. My first beer. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> My first beer is drinkable. That's yeah. so exciting. Yeah. Not that I ever doubted you, but <laughs> well, just me. You don't know me well enough. Um, so <laughs> thanks for watching. Now that we've got this beginner beer out of the way, go ahead and check out the rest of the videos we have. We have a ton of like more advanced beers, I would say, videos where we use more ingredients, more hops. Check those out. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you for having me. For information on the brewing system we're using and for even more information on how to brew beer, check out our website, clawhammersupply.com.